Welcome back to another episode of my bipolar channel where I keep just making up stuff and some people watch it because I don't know what you guys want to watch. But to summarize what this episode is going to be is it's basically going to be a pilot for content that can be put out regularly. The bigger projects are, have been what I've been doing entirely, but the content upload schedule is random and the episodes don't usually go to plan. So I'm trying to find a way to make quick content that isn't garbage. And I do have lots of little small projects that need to be done as far as like modifications or repairs or whatever. So I can turn into them into episodes as long as it's something that is at least moderately interesting. To lay out a game plan, this is a Flathead Briggs rototiller. No one cares about the rototiller part. However, whenever you get a go-kart, most of the time it's going to come with a Flathead Briggs or a Flathead Tecumseh. So a lot of this can be carried over, but the plan here is to pull the head, clean up all the carbon, probably replace the coil with something with a kill switch so I can remove this kill switch and then just do a reseal of the carbon ventilation system and then I also have plans for doing patina stuff with the paint. All of that can be put into one episode. I just was like I have to do this anyway because this thing needs work. Just to dig into it real quick. This is a 78 five horse Briggs. Pretty common with like go-karts or motorbikes, mini bikes, whatever you want to call them. But the reason this is all coming about to begin with is this engine is one of the best things I've ever had. It never cares about the service that's been done down to it. It doesn't care about the temperature. It doesn't care about having junk fuel in it. The thing just always runs. That's the only reason I'm even bothering with all this stuff because it's earned it, I think. I mean, there's a decent amount of carbon built up on the head, but the piston itself is really clean. That's super impressive. I don't know how that's possible, but maybe someone's been in here before. I got everything pretty clean. I'm happy with it at least. Most of the large amounts of carbon are gone. Some of the staining is still there, but that's okay. Got the head all cleaned up and got it reflattened. plan here is to scrub everything with general purpose scotch braid and just a generic degreaser just to get all the grease off, all the dirt off, and then any loose paint scale or rust that can be removed easily. And then we're going to clear coat everything that's we're going to see. So like that's like the gas tank and the outside of that cover and whatnot. And then anything we're not going to see, which is like the underside of that tray, is just going to get coated with black like rust paint. So hopefully there'll still be some paint left and it'll look good when it's done. But we won't know until we do it. So. Okay, so everything's cleaned up pretty well. I'm happy that it 
more of the original paint is there. And now that I've done this, I've remembered that when I was younger, I painted this. The original color was this like cream color. And a long while back, I painted it white just to try to make it look better. But I painted over all the stuff that was there. And, you know, later on, I regretted it because it looked really bad. But now I'm happy about it because it's given more depth to the patina. I'm going to use just high temp engine clear. The next step is to pull this coil off. I've got two coils to pick from, from mowers. I'm pretty sure they both work. By the way, I'm gonna start off by pulling this one off. Okay, um, I usually use a business card for gapping it. There is an actual measurement that you need to use for it, but that tends to be the one that's most readily available, I think, for most people who don't have like a feeler gauge. This coil is not gonna work. Okay, good. I ended up deciding to replace most of the hardware on this engine just from when I took it apart. Like it's kind of expected that whenever you have something old that many people have owned and worked on, there's going to be random bits of hardware on it. For the sake of doing this right, I bought all the new stuff and for the head, I got actual Briggs bolts, which are these guys. And when I took the ones out, they were a couple different lengths. A couple of them didn't have like the shank here. They were all random. And then the rest of the hardware, I just went to the hardware store and matched all of the hardware I took off. That way I have new replacements of. I couldn't find an actual torque spec for these, so I'm just gonna go to like 12 foot pounds and go from there and see how it feels. And always go cross pattern. Okay, so there's that. Everything else is fine. This gasket needs to go. I didn't bother filming this kind of stuff because it's kind of boring, but the diff fluid got changed, the engine got oil got flushed, and then the air filter got cleaned. And no one wants to see that kind of stuff, so I didn't bother filming it, but it was done. So we can go ahead and check that off the list. Okay, so where I'm at currently is, I went to try to start it, realized there was no spark, then did some Googling to try to figure it out. Turns out that I'm an idiot, and the coil that I took off is set up for points ignition, not electronic ignition. And I didn't realize this, but I'm actually, the thing I'm trying to do is convert to electronic ignition without realizing it. This coil is not gonna work unless I pull the flywheel and reconnect the ignition signal back to the points, or I can just continue with converting this coil to fit on the mower and 
The reason this doesn't fit is because this coils for a lawnmower, which is vertical shaft, and the holes for vertical shaft and horizontal shaft are different. So I've pretty much ruined this just opening it up. I think at this point this is just gonna be for testing purposes, but for now I'm just gonna continue hogging it out. This one's fairly good. I need to open it up a little bit more, and this one has a little bit left. Okay, new coils on. We do have spark, and it seems the kill switch is gonna work. I'm gonna fire it up, let it warm up a little bit. Okay, so the plan here is I'm going to run wire from the coil up to the switch and then from the switch back to the engine because I tried to ground it on like the chassis and it didn't work. I have to ground it to the engine. All right, so I have the wiring done. It's all in a loom. Everything's heat shrinked. Everything should be where it needs to be now. Okay, well it's done. It runs and hopefully it'll last another 10 years, maybe more. Either way, feel free to leave a comment to let me know if you guys are okay with these random one episode builds. And really the only thing that's gonna be a common amongst all of the projects is that they're gonna, there's gonna be an engine involved. Like I said, this is a tiller. No one cares about tillers, but the engines break so you can learn a little bit from it, I guess. So yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned.